Okay, it's time to now convert from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. This is not as complicated as you might think. The first thing you have to do is determine the length of your hypotenuse or the radius of what would be a circle. Uh, the second thing you'll do is find the angle, theta, and from that, that information, you will find all four polar coordinates. Do not forget that when you are converting from rectangular to polar, there will be four polar coordinates. So, let's say we're going to convert negative 3, 2 to polar coordinates. That's really the first thing you have to do. It's really simple, is you are going to plot the points. Well, where would they be? What coordinate are, or what quadrant are they in? It's going to be here in the second quadrant. We'll have negative 3, 2, and that gives us a nice right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse, which we call R. So if we do that, we end up with a square root of 13, which is about 3.8. Now, for the most part, we like to leave them as the square root of 13, but if they are a higher root that needs to be simplified, um, there are a lot of people who have troubles with that, so we are going to go ahead and leave them as a decimal for our purposes right now and just make it 3.8. Now we have to find the angle theta. That's also very simple because we have a great right triangle here, and it's this angle right here. And that means all we have to do is tangent or inverse tangent, which is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, so it's going to be 2 over 3, and we will get that r theta, this angle right here, is about 33.69 degrees. Now that we have that information, we've got that our r is 3.8 and our theta is 33.69. Now we can find our polar coordinates or our angles. So we always start at our polar axis and measure from the polar axis to our r which would be hypotenuse or radius. So we will start here and go all the way to this point and stop. And we will find that simply by saying, well, all the way to 180 is 180. So if we subtract 33.69, then that will give us the rest of this angle right here. So we can say 180 minus 33.69 is going to give us 146.31. That is our positive angle and we can put it right here. The other half, there are two ways that you can find this. It's just going to be the rest of the circle, so you could say 360 minus 146.31, and you will get 213.69 degrees. Don't forget, this is a negative angle. It's the negative half of the circle, and we're going down, or clockwise. Now, the other way that you can do this, of course, is to say, I'm going to take 180, all of this and add what we got for theta of 33.69. So there are two ways to do that, but either way you should get the same amount or the same angle of 213.69. Don't forget that one is positive and one is negative, so you have to make sure that you label those correctly. Now we have to find the other two, so those are the negative r or the opposite of r. So we are going to flip over to the other side and do our negative 0.38, but you will notice that these angles are different. So if we simply start at our polar axis and we go down to the R, our hypotenuse, we end up at negative 33.69. So this is a negative direction, so make sure that when you write that down, you put that in as a negative. You could say 0 minus 33.69 or you could just use your common sense. Now for our positive angle we have to go all the way around here and the easiest way to do that is just going to say I'm going to take 360 and I'm going to subtract what this little blue angle is here, 33.69 r theta, and I'm going to end up with 326.31. Now don't forget when you're looking at these, if you look at this one here if I add these two, the blue and the red angles, I should end up with 360. That should be a whole circle all the way around. The same for these if the, when we're talking about our negative r. 
It needs to end up being a whole circle, so together, if you add these up, they need to equal 360. If you end up with some crazy numbers in the 400s, then you've something, done something drastically wrong. So then when we look at it, for negative 3, 2, the rectangular coordinate, we end up with these four polar coordinates. These four coordinates are the answer to that one simple little question. Okay, now it's your turn. Convert negative 4, negative 6 to polar coordinates. And you can pause the video and find that out now. Okay, here are the answers. If you have to convert negative 4, negative 6 to polar coordinates, you're going to end up first in quadrant 3. It's in the third quadrant. So we find our R with Pythagorean theorem. It's going to be 7.21. Our inverse tangent of theta is going to be 6, or when we're finding theta, is going to be 6 over 4. You don't have to worry about the negatives. And that's going to give us a 56.31 degrees. The negatives in these cases, they tell us about a direction, and we don't need that in order to find out what theta is. So if it's 56.31, then if we're going to, we want to do the first one, 7.21 first. Our positive angles, 180 plus theta, which is 56.31. Our negative is going to be 180 minus theta. And to find that, so our first two points are done right here, 7.21 and 236.31 degrees, and 7.21 and negative 123.69 degrees. Then we have to look at the second one. And we're going to flip it over to do our negative 7.21 and have 0 plus 56.31. Don't forget, it's still the same theta. And we have to go all the way to the other side, going clockwise, and get our negative, which is going to be 360 minus 56.31. So here is the answer that you should have gotten. Negative 7.21 and 56.31 degrees, and negative 7.21 and negative 303.69 degrees. Woo! I hope you got it right.